Good evening, and welcome to Release Your Wings. Are you happy now? Tonight, we are discussing relationships with happiness. I'm Dan Bagley, and I'm interviewing Shireen Chada tonight of the Brahma Kumaris, and we're going to talk about happiness, what makes us happy, and how to get happier. So, Shireen, what makes us happy? What relationships make us happy? Or what relationships make us happy? Good question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that before I even talk about relationships outside of myself, mm -hmm. I need to talk about what relationship I have with my own body. And to be able to have a relationship with my own body, then I have to see myself, the soul, as separate from this body. Uh -huh. That I am the soul, I am light, I am the spiritual being, and I am occupying this body. So I am a soul, I have a body. It's not the other way around. Right, right. And then in this body, then when I have this consciousness, that when I come into a relationship with this body, with the thought, mm -hmm. I, the soul, am in this body and I'm taking support from this body, then I'm beginning a relationship with it. And I'm actually begin beginning a relationship of independence from it. Explain independence. Um, if I get trapped, let's say if I get trapped in any of the labels, if I get trapped in the fact that I'm a body, or if I get trapped in the label that I'm Indian, uh -huh. or if I get trapped like I'm from a good family, or I get trapped that I have a good position, I get trapped in those things. Right. So I get very dependent on them. Uh -huh. But when I become independent, when I see myself, the soul, as separate from the body and that there are labels of the body, like the year, the make, the mortal, there's labels of the mm -hmm. body, but the soul has different characteristics. So I, then I come into a relationship with the body. So two things that come to mind on this. Number one is, since we have a relationship with the body, we want to take care of it. Right. In maximum thing. The other piece is the identification with the body, though, is secondary. In other words, almost by analogy, I really like my car and I try to take care of it, but I'm not my car. Exactly. It is not what defines me. Right. It's not what defines me. And so when I come into a relationship like that, mm -hmm. I like my car, but I'm not my car. I'm not this vehicle. Then I start a relationship of happiness because it's an independent relationship. I've made myself independent from the body. So what I'm hearing is a major key to happiness is not being encumbered by the labels, by the, I want to say even the shoulds of, because I am fill in the blank a professor, I should do something, or right, should believe so right, and so. Right, right, right. And the other part of this relationship of happiness with the body, to have a really relationship, to be happy, to have this right. beautiful relationship with the body, is that I take support from it. It's very important in my life. But also, I take support from it because I'm here to serve. Mm -hmm. That I'm serving, I'm serving others. So I take support from it and I come into relationship with someone else. So this is an interesting thing. So the role of service in terms of happiness, because in a funny way, I mean, certainly uh, Christianity has within it, it's more blessed to give than receive. So that's definitely a service yeah, definitely, yeah. piece. But also there's some good brain science on this that when we are truly giving service, when we're helping others, the altruistic self, we have in our brains from functional MRIs, I have read, that the pleasure centers of our brain, the feeling gratification lights up. So part of this happiness is giving service. Yeah, definitely giving service. And so when we talk about relationship with others, mm -hmm. the soul coming into a relationship with others, that, that relationship of service, of giving rather than taking, does mm -hmm. give happiness. But also when I love people without deception. Uh -huh. and I, I like feel that. The, love people without deception. And Elaborate. <laughs> what happens is when people are um, many times in like with say husband and wife uh -huh. or any relationship that there could be some kind of a deception. Mm -hmm. And that deception I feel happens when I identify too much with the physical. I identify with their physical labels. 
Uh-huh. Now, I'm not identifying with my physical labels, but I'm identifying with someone else's position or body or wealth. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of deception comes, and I feel that's not spiritual love. Uh, the Jewish uh, philosopher, theologian, Martin Buber, wrote a book called I and Thou. And I think he's talking about what you're talking about. And that is, you can see someone as an it, and we often do this, as the boss, as the role they play, right. as the spouse. Right. Or you can connect with them at the most basic soul level of the thou relationship, right. which is sacred of right. sorts. Right, right. And so when I come into that relationship of just soul with soul, Mm -hmm. and then there's one other aspect of happiness in this relationship, and that is I have the power of tolerance. Uh And tolerance here, I don't mean I'm tolerating racial differences or I'm tolerating their bad things, but that I'm able to give under whatever circumstances. I'm not, Mm -hmm. you know, there are no, this, oh, they're not behaving right, so I'm not giving them today. So there are no deal killers within, <laughs> right. within the game. Yeah, and so and that tolerance actually gives us happiness. Mm-hmm. And so this true spiritual love without deception gives us happiness. That when I really come into a relationship of that soul to soul, and also this kind of tolerance gives us happiness. So within this deep happiness, uh, let's separate happiness as we're talking about it, from the momentary, uh, oh goody, I get to go on the Ferris wheel kind of happiness. Because this isn't exactly where we're going No, with this. no, no. I mean, it could be. Yeah, but it, you're <laughs> talking about something a little bit more abiding. Right. So what's the role of our peers, our friends, to our happiness? In other words, should we seek out happy people? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I would think so. Or we should seek out people who are willing to change themselves. Uh-huh. Because who are really on a journey of transformation. Mm-hmm. Because we do get affected by the association we keep. So I, I now and then will talk to someone who says, well, my spouse is not on my spiritual journey. What do I do? What would your answer to them be? Tolerate. My, my answer is always love them right where they are. Right. But within that, the tol- I think we're saying the same thing within that. Allow them to be who they need to be right now. Right. Without right. judgment. Right. And also what happens is when I change, it's bound to happen. The world around me will change. There's a resonance that ha- happens. So if that. she's not getting spiritual, it means you're not being too spiritual yourself. Ah. Well, you know, that kind of comes into it because uh, perhaps one of the ways we stay unhappy is I would be a better person if you were a better person, which is avoiding responsibility. Right. So if we're not happy, are we doing something wrong? Um, sure, sure. Yeah. I think it is a way, um, it's a way of telling us. This, the soul is telling us, yes, you're doing some wrong steps. So our natural state is joyfulness, happiness. Yes. And if we're not feeling that on a regular basis, then we're probably contributing to their, our own unhappiness. Yeah. And I was thinking there's another, a couple of other things yeah. here, but one very, very important relationship we need to understand is the relationship between the heart and the mind. Mm-hmm. Talk more about that. You know, when we have old things in the heart, like um, if I hold grudges or yeah. someone did something to me, said something to me, I have all of these old wounds. Right. then the mind can't be peaceful. Mm-hmm. And so I have to understand this relationship between mind and the heart. And in between the mind and the heart, I feel there's something called understanding. Mm-hmm. And that we call intellect, which really is um, buddhi or awareness or understanding. We call buddhi actually. Yeah. And so in this, this understanding of how this is happening or when my intellect, place this, that I receive peace, that I start healing myself and start experiencing that deep peace Mm -hmm. with understanding, with knowledge, then my mind starts healing. So I don't necessarily need to understand why they snapped at me. I need to understand that all things work toward 
a greater good. Is that what I'm hearing? Or no, is it... I need to understand the relationship between my heart, my mind, and my ah. intellect. It's not about other people. Not about the externals at all. Nothing okay, about anyone else. So if I understand that when I, when I have deep understanding, then mm -hmm. I'm experiencing deep peace. And when I'm experiencing deep peace, that the mind is experiencing deep peace. And when the mind is experiencing deep peace, then the heart heals. Yeah. So if I find myself less than happy, then what I, it's, circumstances don't need to change, really. No, my understanding of my relationship between the mind, the heart, and the intellect really need to, it's the self, yeah. right? You know, people always say knowledge is power. And so this is knowledge of the self. How are you as a soul operating? So when someone says, you made me so bad, so angry, in a funny way, that's not possible. I mean, without our own compliance. Uh, right, uh, right. With our own complicity within that. No, without permission from us, no one yeah. can do it. Actually, Eleanor Roosevelt said something like that. No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. So within that, no one can make us unhappy without our buying into something that's unreal. Is that, is yeah. that accurate? Yeah, unreal. And also to look at how to heal the heart. Mm -hmm. And to be able to heal the heart, I feel that is where this whole aspect of meditation comes in. Then I have to start experiencing deep peace. So how do I experience deep peace? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> how do I experience deep peace? Don't mean to take your role and ask the question, <laughs> but how do I experience deep peace? Is this thing that if I start thinking about peace, if I start thinking I am peace, that is my original nature, mm -hmm. you know, and start really going into the depth of peace and start b bringing it into my consciousness, then I start experiencing it. And that's when the old wounds heal. And that's when I'm able to really heal the heart and be happy inside. So there are a couple of things that uh, are tangential to this. Number one is one must set up a time to get quiet and to try to tap into this peace. Exactly, in the morning. In the morning. Or at night, both. Yeah. Actually, I would suggest both. <laughs> okay, but if at least in the morning, yeah, and, in then, the morning. Uh, yeah. and then pick it up again at night. And how long should this time uh, starting off at least and then evolving. Maybe 15 minutes. So 15 minutes. And in that meditation thing, that doesn't mean they have to sit. We have to sit in the lotus position no. or something, just comfortably. Comfortably, yeah. Yeah. And you can yeah. use a lot of guided meditations yeah. too, that if you're not able to do it yourself, then you get help from other people. But there, uh, there is one other important aspect of meditation. Okay. And that is the relationship of the soul with the Supreme Soul. Mm -hmm. And so in the relationship of the soul with the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Soul, when the Supreme Soul look, is looking at the soul, is just looking at the soul. It's not looking at your position, it's not right. looking at your body, not looking at your wealth, it's not looking at, you know, the age of the make, nothing. Mm -hmm. So that the relationship is only with that soul the purity of the soul, the love of the soul. And so there, because there's that relationship that, because God is able to really have a relationship with just the soul and nothing to do with the body, there's no deception in it. Mm -hmm. And because there's no deception in it, there's a lot of power in that relationship. And that power brings us happiness. And trusting that power is the essential ingredient to doing that. Right. So in moments of disturbance, the meditation is really about, first of all, quieting the mind enough to hear or to feel, the experience, the connection. Is that correct? Right, right. And then is your personal experience that you laugh more, laugh more easily when you're at peace? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Though it doesn't have to be that mm -hmm. you go around yeah, uh, you know, smiling all the time. Or... But yes, internally you do feel a sense of well-being. Uh huh. So, if there, besides meditation, besides seeing yourself first as a soul who has a body, and putting a, a faith that one can touch this realization, is there one last thought on 
happiness, what should make us or what can make us happier on a daily basis? I would say the meditation, mm -hmm. that to come into first, the first thing is I have to learn to come into a relationship with my own body, mm -hmm. and then I have to come in, learn to come into a relationship with the Supreme Soul. Okay. Because that is what is going, it takes away all of these layers and veils right. that are there, you know, that's stopping me from my own happiness. Yeah. So much of happiness is really removing all the obstacles rather than creating something to divert our attention. Yeah, well said, yeah. Okay, well thank you. <laughs> Since we're on a winning note, we'll wrap up. Thank you for joining us tonight.